Okay, uh, today we're gonna do some maintenance stuff. It is end of February. We got a whole bunch of parts in the mail. Um, I took this thing up for a rip yesterday. Uh, it's twitchy on the throttle again. Um, 20,000 kilometers on it. I've done normal maintenance schedule, normal stuff. Like you gotta do synchronization, spark plugs, oil changes, all the stuff. But it's just kind of not 100% right. So we're gonna work on that today. I have this, which I've used like once, but I now finally have learned the right way to use that. We need the goodie bag too. You're just gonna wanna zero these things out, pull the faces off of them, and then uh, slot screwdriver. You'll see the adjustment screw. Go back and forth, uh, get whatever gauges you're gonna use of, you know, two, three, four, depends how many cylinders you have, and line them up, good to go. So these little valves, what this is gonna do is it's gonna restrict the flow. Oh, that one's already got an O-ring in it. Um, it's gonna restrict the flow coming up to these because this is gonna come in pulses. So you use these to tame the pulses. really high quality. I paid a lot of money for this kit. Ah, here we go. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of permanently, I don't know, put them one way or the other, just so then that way they're always on there because you're always going to need these because um, these power pulses are going to send you all out of whack if you don't get them under control. That one's got to come off, that one's got to come off, this one's got to come off. And same here, here, here. back. If you didn't have crash bars, this would be a lot easier. But if it'll cooperate. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't. Just connect the turn signal. And once you find the sweet spot, That one can come out. Okay, seat's off. Seat mod. Sick. Heh. <laughs> oh, it's so sticky. It's almost like they're full of dirt or something because crash bars. Slides that way. And you want to disconnect this. Sometimes you're a little bit sticky. Does have a little holder that that chills in when you go to put it back together. And then there's a foam here that always falls off. So try not to lose your foam or stick it back on or take it off. I mean, live your life. We're running out of room. Hey, that matches. Now it's fuel tank time. Uh, this part kind of sucks because you're gonna have to hold the tank up so you can get underneath to everything. Um, 
if you snap the neck off the fuel sending unit, you're basically screwed. You're gonna have to buy a whole new one from Yamaha. Good luck. I have no idea what parts availability is. So just take your time doing this. Luckily, it's not like a street bike where you're worried about like all the paint and everything and it's all, you know, crazy and super enveloped. Um, I would call this pretty normal as far as difficulty goes on these bikes, any bike really. Um, easier than a KLR, believe it or not. KLRs are uh, amazing. I love them. I miss mine. Would I buy another one? Yeah, yeah, I would. So yeah, two front push pins. Those are hidden under the front panels. I'm left-handed. I like to stand on this side of the bike. It just works better for me. You might want to stand on that side of the bike, whatever. Um, you probably have a helper the first time you do this because it kind of sucks. But you can kind of come up like halfway. Um, there's a red clip which I'll show you a little bit later when it's easier to get in there. And then your main power clip and your vent, which goes to your emissions system. Okay, okay. So yeah, you gotta do the clip and I can't remember if this one comes off or not. No, it doesn't feel like it, but yeah. Pushing a little and then Squish the sides. Again, like this really sucks. I'll just have to show you closer when we get it off. Oh, there we go. There would be a little fuel dribble. That's normal. Ooh, not even a drop. Okay. And then your tank is free. My tank is full because, like I said, I don't plan ahead. <sighs> Shop hoodie. So now you can see. Um, when this thing is sitting in place, it's all like this. So that one comes straight down. That one has a little clip like this. You see, this is the part that lifts. So that sits there, push up, push here and wiggle it down. It'll come undone. If you got a bunch of dirt, dust and crap in there like I do, it's a little bit harder. This is your red clip. It normally rests like this. So that goes and it clips up on the hose itself. So that one just goes that way towards the left. And then here and here you have to push, right? Like these gotta, gotta squeeze. Sometimes you can use a pair of pliers if you've got a nice little small set. Um, say like those, these have worked decent in the past, but then you kind of get past the fuel hose as well and give that a little squish and that works. But fingers work too. Um, if you do lots of your own work, you'll be fine. Just, uh, yeah, take your time and like when you go to take it off, push it in. If you don't push it in first, it's going to be really hard to go and pull out and it pulls out like a lot further than you think it's going to have to. Make your life as easy as possible. Oh wow, is that gas or is that water? Or is it just humidity? Anyways, T7 warranty claim coming up. Let's stick that one there. Stick that one there. That makes it the easiest. You don't have to reach in behind everything. And then this can just hang out over here. You can just kind of tuck it just for ease of everything. Um, I just like to tee in because I know the bike runs better and you're gonna want to set it up real world, how it's running, the way it is, when it's warm, all that. And if you have that undone, the bike's gonna change everything. It's gonna change your fueling. It's gonna change your timing. It's just not gonna be the same and you could have a difference in there. So I like to tee into that. Other side, way down here, is your other nipple. It's got a cap on it with a little spring clip. That's where our other hose goes. And you can see one of the air bypass valves right here. That's what we're gonna be adjusting, is that one. And then this one, it's a little hidden. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe I'll check from the other side. And then this one here. The left hand is your primary throttle body. It's the one that the cable connects to. Long set of pliers is your best friend. So is a flashlight. There's your buddy. And just give that a little tug. Cool. 
Cool. So yeah, now that's uh, pretty well set up. We got these zeroed as close as we can for the quality they are. And uh, yeah, now we just kind of have to find a way to get the fuel tank over here and still adjust it. I'm trying to remember how I did it last time. We'll figure it out. Okay, things are now as precarious as they can become. Uh, it's kind of just how I operate. That'll do. basically it it already runs better um, just gonna you know tighten that a little bit uh, we got a little crisscrossed applesauce when I move this because I wasn't planning ahead it's weird that's a recurring theme so if you do the same thing don't worry about it 